show you in this video is how I can set up a matrix equation, let's say for a, a network of resistors, uh, solve it in MATLAB. Uh, so I'm going to go through um, a way of doing this, but first thing I'm going to show you is actually something that ends up not really working, but might might be something that you might attempt to try. Okay, so what I'm going to do is look at this resistor array. I'm looking at the current going through each resistor. Let's say that's what I want to solve for. I want to know what the current is going through each resistor in the resistor array. So I across resistor R1, I label the current I1. And across resistor 7, R7, I label the current I7, and so on all the way around. Now, what I'm going to do is do a type of nodal analysis on this circuit. I'm going to say at any given node, the total current going in must equal the total current leaving. So if I look at this node right here, I can write down an equation for that. I can say the current going in is I1. So I have 1 times I1. The current going out is I2 and I3. So 1 times I1 minus I2 minus I3 has to sum to 0. And what I'm putting in this column is, is the sum of that total current. So I have these numbers uh, must accumulate to 0. The next one, let's say I look at this note over here. Now I have I3 going in, and then leaving I have I8, I9, I6, and I4. So I can say that I1 times I3 minus 1 times I4 minus 1 times I6 minus 1 times I8 minus 1 times I9, all of that adds up to 0. So I go along different nodes doing that. Down here, I'm doing something a little bit different for this expression. So I'm looking at the voltage drop across the resistor here. So I can say, for example, that 6 times I1 is the voltage drop across that resistor. The voltage drop across this resistor is 4 times I3. This is 10 times I8. This is 2 times I10. This is 8 times I7. And this is 4 times I5 until I get over to here. And that voltage drop must be 10 volts. So that's where this expression comes from here. I have 6 times I1, okay, and then I have 4 times I3, and 4 times I5, 8 times I7, 8 times I7 is for this one right here, 10 times I8, this one right here, um, and then um, this should be uh, yeah, 10 times I8, 2 times I10, and all that has to add up to 10 volts. So I'm looking at various equations here. This is also a voltage drop equation here, where I'm saying that 6 times I1 plus 8 times I2 has to equal 10, right there. And then I take um, my matrix, this matrix going these values right in here. Okay, That goes into a matrix I call A. And, and uh, here I have A spread out here. There are 10 unknowns uh, and 10 equations. And I'm saying that if I take this matrix, multiply by a column vector of I1, I2, I3, I4, and I so, and so on, that has to give me this column vector. So that is the matrix equation that I want to solve in MATLAB. So I set that up in MATLAB. I'll show you in a minute how I can how I can import um, numbers out of a table like this into um, into MATLAB, and, I, um, and I'll show you in a minute how I do that. So I set up my matrix A. Here's matrix A down here, and I have it set up in MATLAB. Uh, you see that A is a 10 pi 10 double precision matrix here. And uh, A gets printed out right in here when I'm running the program. So here's A. Uh, and then I'm going to find the inverse of A. Here's C, by the way. Here is that uh, the column vector uh, that I showed you right here. That is this column vector right here, the one up and down here. 
right all along there. That's C. So I have, I want to find the inverse of A, and I want to multiply that inverse times C, and that should give me the values for the currents. Now, what I discover is that when I try to compute the inverse of matrix A, right here I say B equals inverse of A, I get a warning message from MATLAB. Warning matrix is close to singular or badly scaled. Results may be inaccurate. Okay, now what that's telling me is that uh, it tries to compute the inverse matrix and uh, in the process of doing that, it's almost doing a divide by zero in the process. And that's because my 10 equations that I have represented here are not independent equations. In other words, I have, even though I have 10 variables, many of these variables um, are not independent. In other words, the value of I10 depends exactly on the values of some of these other variables. I, it's not an, uh, it, I have 10 equations, 10 unknowns, but in the matrix sense, they are not linearly independent. So that means I cannot use, at least in, in, by doing a matrix inverse operation, multiplication, I cannot use this set of equations. I have to come up with something where I have independent variables uh, and some number of them and exactly the same number of independent equations. So to do that, I approach the problem a bit differently here. I look at loops here. I have a loop and I say there's a current I1 going around this loop. I have another loop here going around this closed circuit and I say the current going around that closed circuit is I2. The current going around this is I3, I4, and then I5 over here. Now, how do I set up my uh, matrix problem using these loops? So what I do here is I say, okay, I'm going to look at the voltage drop across every loop. Okay, so I have voltage drop here, voltage drop here must be 10 volts. So the voltage drop here is I1 is the current going through there. So it's 6 times I1 is that voltage drop. That's where 6 I1 is here. Now the current going down this way is going to be the I1 current and then but minus the I2 current. So the voltage drop across here is 8 times I1 minus I2. So I have voltage drop 6 I1 plus 8 times I1 minus I2 is equal to 10. 10 volts. That's what I have here. So that's where this first equation comes from. Let's look at this loop equation, okay? I'm saying the current going around here is I2. So I have 4I2. That's what I have here, 4I2. Then I have I2 going down here, but I2 isn't the only current going down here. I have I3 going in the other direction. So I have 4I2, and then I have 8, which is this resistor, times I2 minus I3, 8 times I2 minus I3. And now, the, and then I have to look at the, so a voltage drop across here, a voltage drop across there is 8 times I2 minus I3. The voltage drop across here is 8 times I2 minus I1. So I have 8 times I2 minus I1. And the total voltage drop across this loop is zero. So that's where this equation comes from. Then I look at this loop. Okay, what do I have? I have the current going through here is going to be I3 minus I2 times 8. Okay, current going down here is going to be I3 minus I4 times 6. I3 minus I4 times 6. The current going through here is just I3 times 4. And this current going around this loop has to, this voltage around this loop has to sum to zero. The volt, so I'm looking at the voltage around every loop, ultimately what it has to sum to. Sums to zero for every loop except for the first one when I get here 10 volts going around there. So that's how I write these equations. Now notice that here I have five currents I1, I2, I3, I4, and I5, 
and I have five equations. So unlike the first way I set up the problem, where I had 10 variables and 10 equations, here I only have five variables and five equations, and these variables all turn out to be linearly independent. In other words, I can solve the matrix equation here. So now I rearrange these terms. Uh, so I get all the I1 terms together. Notice I1 appears in two places in this equation. So I rearrange the terms in all the equations. So I get 14I1 minus 8I2 equals 10. Minus 8I1 plus 20I2 minus 8I3 equals 0. And I do that for each one of these equations, and I get this. OK, so now what I want to do is I want to um, rewrite this whole thing as a matrix. So I write it up as a matrix, and I have uh, 14i1 minus 8i2. That's what I have here. Let me, let me look at it down here. 14i1 minus 8i2 equals 10 volts minus 8i1 plus 20i2 minus 8i3 is 0 volts, and I do that for each one of those equations. And then this gives me this matrix right in here. And then this is my what I'm calling my C vector, and here I'm calling it C3. So I now have a 5 by 5 A matrix and a 5 um, size 5 column matrix. That I can put into MATLAB. Now, how do I put a matrix uh, out of a out of a uh, a table in a and here it's uh, just in a, a text editor? How do I put this matrix in MATLAB? What I do is I highlight the entire array like this, and I copy it into my clipboard. So I just copy it there. I've just copied it. Now I go over to MATLAB, and what the, the statement I'm going to use in MATLAB is to say um, I'm going to use right in here. Watch, I'm going to type, write it out. I'm going to say clear, CL, clear. So I clear everything out. Okay, so I'm going to import the data. Here I'm importing it into what I called it A2. So don't be confused. I'm calling it A2 here but I called it A3 over here. Okay, so A2. So how do I import it? I type uh, A2 like this, uh, A2 equals, I'll put a space equals space. I do import data, paren, single quote, uh, dash, a minus sign, paste, P-A-S-T-E, special, paste special, uh, single quote, uh, paren like that. And what this does is it pulls the array that I have copied into my clipboard, and it takes that array and puts it into the MATLAB array A2. So that goes, it's, I've already done it, but I can do it again. That goes into array A2, so I hit return right there. So here is my array right there that I just put into array A2. Now, um, when I'm computing the loop currents, I1, I2, I3, I4, and I5, all I want to do is take the inverse of A2 and multiply by C2. So here's my C2. This is just the C2 right here. C2 of... Uh, 10, 0, 0, 0, 0. See that right here? 10, 0, 0, 0, 0. I could have done the paste special for that also. So I take the inverse of A2 right in here, multiply by C2, and I'm saying the numbers that I get from then doing inverse of A2 times C2, those should be the values of the loop currents I1 through I5. And that's what I'm going to compute here. So I'll compute it, and then these are my loop currents, I1 through I5. One, the I1 is 1 amp, I2 is half amp, this is a, I3 is a quarter amp, and so on. You see how this is going all the way down. So now, so this is giving me the loop currents, and then knowing these loop currents, 
In other words, I know this current, this current, this current, this current. I can use those loop currents to individually compute the current going through this resistor, current going through this resistor. Say current going through this resistor is just I1. Current going through this resistor is just I2. Current going through this resistor is I1 minus I2. So you see how that's done. So now this is then how I use MATLAB to solve the currents uh, going through this resistor network using matrix multiplication.